So this is an overview of the ITTOs for Chapter 12, Project Procurement Management. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. So there's three processes in this chapter. One's in planning, one's in executing, and another in monitoring and controlling. So with planned procurement management, we're documenting our procurement method how we're going to get the, um, the things that we need from outside vendors. And then we're identifying potential sellers. Who could provide us those things? And then we're going to conduct procurements, so collecting seller responses about how much things are going to cost and how long it's going to take. And then we're going to choose a seller and award a contract. And then in control procurements, we're going to monitor or manage procurement relationships and make sure that they're um, keeping with their promises. We're monitoring the performance of the contract. Okay, so with planned procurement management, we're documenting the procurement method and identifying potential sellers. So here are the inputs, the tools and techniques, and outputs. So there's several inputs. What I want to focus in on first are the tools, market research and maker by analysis. So at this point, what we're trying to do is first determining if work should be purchased from outside sources, so maker by analysis. We're trying to determine whether we ought to make something for the project or whether we should buy those things from someone else. Are we going to make it or are we going to buy it? We're really trying to focus in on those things that we do best. And so if we're not really good at doing something and it's got to be done for the project, maybe we need to consider buying it from an, out, from an outside vendor. And market research is an examination of industry and vendor-specific capabilities. So is there companies out there that can provide those things that we need, that we were planning to buy? Here are the outputs, there's several of them. Let me focus in on those ones in green. So our procurement management plan describes how we're gonna get the resources we need or the goods and services that we need from outside organizations. How are we gonna go about doing that? And then we're gonna have a procurement statement of work. Basically what we're gonna do is, because the scope is all the work that we're gonna get done on a project, we're gonna pull out that portion of scope from the scope baseline that we're not gonna do, that we're gonna ask someone else to to do for us that we'll pay for, we're going to take that portion of the scope baseline out and include that in a contract, the procurement statement of work, the statement of work that we want an outside vendor to do. And then we're probably going to prepare, prepare bid documents. So it's used to solicit proposals from prospective sellers. So we're going to send out information to sellers that gives them an idea of what the work is going to require, and they give us feedback about how long things are going to take and how much it's going to cost. And we're also going to have as an output maker by decisions, us determining what we're going to make and what we're going to buy, and also source selection criteria. The criteria we're going to use to rate or score sellers. When we get feedback from sellers or vendors about how much it's going to cost to do something and how long it's going to take, we um, are going to score them to make a determination on who we should select. And then we may also have as an output here independent cost estimates. So getting an outside party, someone who's not going to be a seller, to provide a cost estimate just to make sure we can compare that uh, to the sellers that have sent forth information to see if it's if it makes sense if it's not uh, totally overboard so here's the procurement statement of work remember we're taking our scope baseline and pulling a portion out to include in a contract so it's the procurement statement of work it's a portion of the scope baseline and then our source selection criteria the way we're going to score and rate sellers we based on things like overall cost, completion time, past performance, and so on. Okay, so now let's talk about conducting procurements, collecting seller responses, choosing a seller, and awarding a contract. So here are the inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs in this case. Um, and let me actually focus in on first on some of the tools and techniques. So these are ways that uh, we can um, work with sellers. We, we might use bidder conferences, so meeting with the buyer, us, and all possible sellers prior to submission of a bidder or proposal. So we might sit down with all the potential sellers to give them feedback about what we expect, and then they could ask us plenty of questions about what we are looking for, just to make sure it's clear. So when we have conferences with those people that are going to provide bids or estimates for how long things are going to take and how much they're going to cost to get done. Another tool could be proposal evaluation, some formal way or method or plan for how we're going to review proposals or bids as they come in from vendors. 
And then we could use advertising just to make sure we get as many potential sellers as possible. And that would be probably ideal. Um, if we, there's, there's more competition, hopefully it's going to drive down the price for us. So we could use advertising to draw more potential sellers. And eventually when we kind of narrow it down to um, a seller that we'd like to go with, there may be some negotiations with them before we sign an official contract just to clarify the structure requirements and terms so that everybody uh, comes to an agreement. And in the conduct procurement process, the key outputs are going to be selected sellers and agreements. So selected sellers are those who are selected to perform the work. We're going to select someone to get the work done. And then we have an agreement or a contract with them. So they're promising to get the work done, and we're promising to pay them. Uh, those agreements may include things like deliverables, the schedule baseline, performance reporting, roles and responsibilities, pricing, payment terms, and so on. It's going to include a lot of the detail about what we're expecting, what we need, when they're going to deliver it, how much we're going to pay them, and so on. Then we're going to control procurements. We're going to manage our relationships with our contractors or vendors, and then we're going to monitor the performance of the contract over time. We want to make sure that our contractors are delivering what they had promised. So here are the inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. Let's focus in on some of the tools. We've got claims administration and audits. And actually, I should have mentioned this before, but remember, on these monitoring and controlling processes, we're comparing our plan against what actually happened. And so we have our project management plan here. We also have agreement. So that's a, the agreement with the vendor or the seller. And we're going to compare that to what's actually happening. So we have the plan, which includes the project management plan, the agreements, other procurement documents. And then we're comparing that to work performance data to see if they're actually delivering what they planned or promised to. And then the tools, a couple of them here are going to be claims administration and audits. So audits are a review of the procurement process to identify successes and failures. As we go through this and we start working with vendors, we start to get an idea of whether we need to make adjustments to our company's procurement process uh, or our project procurement process. So we do a better job next time of uh, addressing issues or making sure there aren't issues that pop up. And then there's claims administration, used when buyer and sellers, a seller don't agree, and it may require some alternative dispute resolution. We have to have some legal way to resolve issues with our vendors if we're in a disagreement. Uh, other tools could be performance reviews, earned value analysis, trend analysis, just ways of reviewing contract performance to see if they're meeting uh, what was promised. Okay, and then our key output here is going to be closed procurements. Those are just when the buyer provides the seller with formal written notice that the contract has been completed. Closed procurements. We could also have, like with other monitoring and controlling processes, we could have work performance information coming out as well as change requests or updates to other documentation like even our procurement documentation that's already been created.